Hello, I can't wait to get started with you all. Um, before we begin, I want to show you the materials that I am using and also just encourage you to use whatever you have in your home. The focus on this is really creativity. Um, so I'll share with you what I'm using and talk about it, but really any materials that you have can be used here. If you've got crayons, markers, acrylics, oil paints, I'm gonna be using oil paints today. And um, I've chosen a couple colors. Just wanna show you my rhyme or reason behind this. Um, I use a color wheel to help me out. And um, kind of one general rule of thumb that is often helpful is to choose colors, I'll just show you this little dial here, that are opposite one another on the color wheel. I'm gonna be using a yellow greenish color called green gold. I'm gonna choose its opposite for an accent color, and that's under the red violet, and I've got a dioxamine purple. And then for a little added um, interest, I'm gonna use, I'm looking at there's a triangle on color wheels, and these, these are called triads, and I'm gonna use a blue violet and a reddish, reddish orange. So, um, for my blue, I've got a manganese blue hue, which is actually more in this blue area, but I'm gonna mix it probably with my violet. And for this reddish orange, I've got a naphthol red. <clears throat> I have a piece of multimedia artboard. You can paint on anything that you have. This is just a particular material I like because it accepts all mediums. I have some palette paper, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's just sort of like a translucent piece of wax paper. You can use wax paper too, or certainly a palette if you've got it. I will be using cold wax medium, and this is something that I used in order to layer my work and in order for the paint to dry faster, you certainly don't need this, but this is what it looks like, like a white paste. I'm going to be painting with a couple of interesting tools. I've got a palette knife, and this is called a clay shaper tool. Um, I like to use tools that are a little less exact. It helps me remain free in my work. A lot of times I'll use my hands, which is why I'm wearing gloves. Um, you're certainly welcome to use a brush I have some painter's tape, and I'll show you what I do with this in a second. I'd like to use this to create a border around my paintings. And then I have a picture of my kind of inspiration image, and I'll start with that. Um, I'm gonna show you how I might go about approaching creating this beautiful scene into an abstract landscape painting. It's one of many techniques that I use when I do this, and it's a great place to start. And then I've also converted the picture into black and white. Um, so the first thing that I might do is look at this. I don't wanna recreate this exactly. The idea behind the approach is that um, I can capture the essence of the, of the time, of the memory, of the moment, without actually painting it. So I'm gonna be thinking a lot about the feelings, the thoughts, the emotions, the textures of the place, and I'm also going to begin with the shapes of this particular scene. So one thing that is wonderful to do in abstract painting is sort of think about the big picture. And the big picture of this is the shapes that I'm seeing. So I've got a crayon here. Actually, I'm gonna take a marker that's easier for you to see. And I'm just gonna really loosely outline some of the general shapes that I see here. I'm not, you know, going overboard with exactness. I'm just kind of outlining some general shapes. I've transferred this to black and white because one interesting thing to do is to make sure when we're using these very playful colors that we've got 
darks and lights. And sometimes that's hard to see when we're focused on the beautiful colors that we're creating. So I'm just gonna eyeball this and get a sense of, well, this is a darker space here. This is dark. This space here is quite light. And this space here is quite light. And this space here is quite light. And maybe the ocean area is what I would call a mid-tone, someplace between dark and light, and the mountainside here is in the middle. I'm just gonna use that as a reference, again, not to take it too literally, but just to kind of make sure that my painting has some dark, some lights, and some in the middle. The next thing that I'm going to do is prepare my board, and I do this by putting tape around the edges. And again, this is an optional step. I like to do this because it creates a really beautiful natural border when I'm finished. I do wanna tell you that this video um, will be sent to you after the webinar, after the free live class is over. So you're welcome to just watch me do it this time and then paint along and push pause. I do move rather quickly, and the reason that I move quickly is because I feel like it helps me turn my brain off. A lot of abstract painting is learning how to tap into that creative side, that playful side, that non-critical side. That's where the unexpected and exciting results come in. And one way of getting to that playful side and turning our inner critic off and focusing on play is to not overthink things. So I've got my board ready here. And the next thing I'm going to do is to prepare my palette. Now I'm gonna show you my approach to doing this. I'm not gonna take you through every color that I'm using, but I want to give you some ideas. My idea when recreating the scene is not to make it exactly as I saw it. Again, I'm trying to be playful and capture the essence of the place. And I'm going to do that with colors too. They're not necessarily going to be the most realistic. One of the things um, that I keep in mind when I paint is that I, that I work from an intuitive level. And that means that I have an idea where I'm going. But at some point, midway through the painting, I'm following the paints and experimenting and almost like a big journey, putting one step, one foot in front of the other. I don't always know where the journey's gonna go. So I'm gonna prepare my palette ahead of time with the basic colors, and that's gonna allow me to focus on the playfulness of spirit of my journey. And if I have the basic colors set out, and I know that those work with one another the way I showed you on the color wheel, then I can really explore freely and not be overthinking, well, will these colors fit with one another? Will they work? I'm gonna set my colors out ahead of time and I'm gonna know that they are gonna work. So I'm just putting all those four different colors in that triad that I showed you. I wanted to put my purple. These are the two main colors I'm gonna focus on, at least for starters. I've got the purple and the green. And I'm gonna put a big pile of white and black. Okay, so I told you that I used cold wax medium. And what I do is I just put a big pile of this on my palette and I mix about 30% wax and 70% oil paint. And I'm just gonna do that with each color for starters so I know that that's mixed. You can see in this blue pile, this is all in real time. You can see in this blue pile, I put perhaps a little bit too much wax and the color is not so saturated. 
So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Now, once I have all of my paints mixed with my wax, and again, this is an optional step, I'm going to begin to play and explore. So my palette is set up and I've got some colors that I love. A lot of this mixing for me sometimes takes place on the painting itself, but let me show you what I mean. I'm going to begin by taking one of my colors, my green, and I want to show you what happens when I mix my green. Look, I have a little bit of purple on that. I mix it with what was the opposite of that green on the color wheel. And what happens is it becomes a different version, perhaps a more toned down, a more muted version of that color. I like to think of a painting is almost like a musical production or a theater production. There's going to be stars of the show, beautiful colors, beautiful moments that emerge. And in order to support the stars of the show, I need a really good supporting cast. And when I create these color combinations that are more neutral, um, they support the stars of the show. So I've got this color here. And let me see what happens. I'm just playing and exploring. Let me see what happens when I mix that color with the green and the purple with the white. It creates this super gorgeous kind of toned down green. Now I might look at this and say, I love this. I actually really like that. Or I might look at that and say, you know what? I don't love that. Let me come up with another combination or alter this one till I do get something I love. So let's pretend I'm gonna add a little bit more green. Maybe this time I'll add some black to it. Let me see what happens if I get some beautiful darker tones besides just the green. I mean, besides just the black, sorry. Now that looks kind of black. Sometimes you can't see what's happening until you add white to it. So all of a sudden I added a little bit more green and a little bit of black and now I get another tone. Well, gosh, that's just gorgeous. What happens when I mix my blue with a little bit of this beautiful green? How does that alter the color? Well, isn't that stunning? What happens when I take that color and mix it with white? Totally different um, experience there. So I'm just playing with my palette, and quite frankly, I don't always know exactly what I'm gonna end up with, but I do know that I'm gonna keep working and playing and exploring till I get colors that respond to the heart and soul of the place and what I like. And I'm gonna encourage all of you to find the colors that you love when creating your palette and your painting. That's part of what makes it so personal and so exciting. So I'm just continuing to mix varying amounts of each of these colors. This is a pure green with white, and that's super stunning, wow. I know I'm gonna to wanna to use that, that's really beautiful. What happens if I focus on the purple end of things? I haven't done that. What if I mix purple with just a very small amount of green? How does that change the color of the purple? Sometimes you can't see how it changes it, until you add it with white. So for example, I can see with my eyes that this purple is um, more toned down than this one, less vibrant, I would say. What happens when I mix each of these with white? And I can do the same thing with black. Well, this purple that I mix with the green, interestingly enough, has almost some red tones that I'm seeing with my eyes, and I think that was because there was a, some red in the green that I used. Interesting. Very pretty kind of mauve -y color. I'm running out of space on my palette here. And I can see that these two purples now are very different. The one that I've toned down 
and with the um, little bit of green in it added to white and then the pure purple. So I'm gonna continue playing with my colors that I've set out ahead of time until I get um, a whole group of colors that I really love. And some are dark on the darker side, some are on the lighter side, and some are on the mid-tone side. And I'm gonna continue with that and prepare my palette so that I know where I'm gonna go to when I'm working on my painting. And um, I can really focus on the playfulness of the painting itself. So I'm gonna set this aside and I've got some colors that I really love. I'm loving some of these greens and I like some of the blues and the purples and I'll show you how I'm gonna use those. So, as a reminder, I set aside this painting and I outlined some very general shapes. And I'm gonna do the same very loosely. I've got a crayon here and um, really without overthinking this, without being rigid or tight, I'm not even holding my pencil in an exact way, my, my crayon in an exact way. I'm just gonna generally outline some of these shapes that I have on my photograph, the scene that I'm trying to remember. And again, it doesn't have to be exact and actually in many ways it's more powerful and beautiful when it's not exact. Okay, I'm just sort of drawing in these shapes uh, and I'm gonna call it a day, okay? Just very general. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm looking back at my photograph and I'm gonna see, all right, here's my dark shapes, here's my light shapes, and here's my middle tone shapes. I'm gonna fill those in without overthinking it with some of the darks, some of the lights, and some of the midtones that I've created on my palette. So for starters, let me see about a beautiful dark tone that I can get going on here. And you see I'm using my palette knife. I like to use the tools that are less exact um, because they really allow me to focus on not being overly attached to the outcome. And it's that playfulness that I'm going to encourage all of you to experiment and explore with. Now I know you probably have questions. I just wanna let you know that I'm going to finish one layer of this painting and then take my gloves off and look at the screen so I can answer some questions for you. Okay, there's one dark shape. Well, you know, here's another dark shape I remember from my picture up here, and I'm gonna just choose a different color that is also dark. These might, may or may not um, show up in the final version of the painting. This is just me beginning the process, beginning the journey. I like to think of it as a really great journey, the first day of summer, and I don't exactly know where I'm going, I've got a train ticket, and I know that there's a great adventure in store for me if I just pay attention to what's happening, and that is exactly the way that I treat each and every painting. It's a great big adventure. And like I said, at some point, the paints are gonna take over and I'm gonna be just responding to what I see in front of me. Okay, I've got a couple dark shapes in there. Maybe I'll add, I know from the, remember, there was one small dark shape here in the foreground. Let me add in some lights. Well, I certainly came up with some super stunning light colors. Let me see. There was a light color here. Part of my, um, my job as a teacher is to expose you to as many tools and techniques and ideas as I can in the hopes that one of them or two of them 
will really allow you the freedom of expression and creativity that your thoughts and your artwork deserves. And I guess it's your job as an artist, because I believe that we really are all artists at heart. I truly believe that. Your job is to continue the experimentation until you find the method and the tool that works right for you. Okay, now you can see right here already, some, some of what's happening is these colors are mixing organically, and I'm liking that. Because if I envision perhaps that this is the pathway, um, you know, this isn't going to be one uniform color. It's going to be many colors that are, if I'm choosing this color, it's in that sort of yellowish range. Okay, speaking about um, using different materials or tools or colors that are helpful for you, I'm going to switch materials just to show you, switch tools, excuse me, just to show you in the hopes, again, that you can beginning, be beginning to just approach your painting in the spirit of exploration and playfulness and just asking the question, what if? Well, right now I'm asking the question, what if I just use this tool instead? I said, this is a, it's called a clay shaper tool. Um, it's just got a, it's like a little mini spatula, actually. There's another light color. Let's see. This is the area that I guess we could loosely call the water. Again, not sure if this is going to stay or not. A lot of times I, once I get the initial colors blocked in, um, that is truly time for just letting the painting and the paints guide the way. So I'm not going to be wed to any of this. That blue is quite stunning. I'm wondering if I want to use it someplace else. My goodness, I'm not sure about that. Maybe I want to add some green to my blue here, just to delineate. Not sure. Okay, and let me get a couple more mid-tones in here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find, but well, what's going to work? Let's see. You see, when I'm using my tools, I'm even using a very light touch on how I hold the tools. I really want to encourage that playfulness of spirit into um, my painting. And it really does make a difference how I hold on to the materials, uh, what I'm thinking and feeling as I'm using the materials. One of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves as artists, and again, I believe we are all artists at heart, is turning off that um, voice of self-criticism and self-doubt. And when that voice can successfully be turned off, um, that's when the most powerful and amazing pieces of art come to life. One way of turning off that voice of doubt is by simply following the paints and letting them guide you. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm just thinking, what color do I want that gorgeous sky to be? If it is indeed the sky, I kind of like the idea of it remaining a sky. Um, so I've got my palette here mixed up. I'm going to go with a light bluish purple and just see how that feels. I'm not sure that's going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay, and like I said, in just a minute, I'm going to push pause, answer questions that may or may not have come up, let the painting set up just for a minute and then continue.
Okay, so I have my initial layers down and let me take a quick break, answer some questions, and then we'll come right back to it. Now, I know you're probably thinking this looks like a bit of a mess and I do wanna say before I turn this off, it is a bit of a mess, but turning that critical mind off, um, as I was saying, that's so important in abstract work and in artwork in general, I believe. Um, each painting is a journey and um, some of our journeys take some chaotic twists and turns. Um, and it's our job as artists to be able to embrace that chaos and trust that we can harness that chaos into some beautiful moments of calm. So that's what I'm gonna do next.